Okay, we're going on another adventure. We're going to uh, Argolas, visit some friends there and make a little vlog. And I'm taking a ride of this man here, of his excellent car. How's it going? What's your name? Frederick McQueen. Cool. Just need to give the guy a push start. But uh, it's all part of the job, man. Yeah, it was easy. I'm just gonna get my stuff and then hopefully we won't wait too long. It could be long, it could be short, we don't know. We'll see. Okay. Oh. Hey, bro. <coughs> that the first problem of the day. Apparently, there is no Bradar's Dorp taxi from here. And I Guys, Ford, there was one, or oh, he lied to me, or oh, he had the wrong information, but yeah, never does of taxi from here. Now I need to get to a place where I can hitchhike or get another minibus taxi or whatever, but this could be a bit of a mission. Don't know if I would have to walk, let's see. I just asked the police where should I go to the minibus taxi, and I said, I turn off the Bredas door, it's like 10 k's out of town. And it's a long walk just to get to the hiking place to get to that place I can hike to the turn off and there's no more police patrols going that way or anything like that so I'm pretty screwed now. Anyway, I thought this was going to be an easy day. It's turning into a hard day. So it goes. Interesting scene up here. Africa is everywhere. <laughs> Let's continue. Walked all the way to the end too, and I met these two people. We're hitchhiking now. They're going to uh, Cairns Bay. This man is a skipper on a boat. And uh, yeah, they've come a long way, they've been each like I said yesterday. So there are many people living like this on the road and doing their thing. Just say names again, please. Anne and Peter. Anne and Peter, nice to meet you guys. Hope you have a good journey. Thank you. In your 10 minutes, the truck just stopped. on his side a bit further down on the road so it's a lot of curious spectators just got dropped at the turn off to Bredal's door but now we're in the middle of nowhere nice
Well, it's not long at all, less than 10 minutes. Um, 20 rand to Bredaas Dorp is really cheap. And this is the man, this is the driver, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. It's a bit grand because I've got my bag on my lap, but that's cool. Bredaasdorp is the main economic hub of this region. It's best known for its shipwreck museum, which is the only one of its kind in the country. At the stretch by turn off, don't know how long I'll wait here. Let's see, so far it's actually been an easy day. Not bad at all. These guys are doing a photo shoot, the models here from Strasbourg. <laughs> he must pose, he must pose for the camera. Yes. <laughs> Getting bored next to the road, so you might as well do a photo shoot and record it. Luckily we got a minibus taxi that's going all the way to a girl past passed trace by and might pick Lisa up there as well, so the wait is over, let's go. These are my model friends. They're coming and driving with me, they're very happy people. Trace by is just 4 kilometers from Agalas and you have to pass it to get to Agalas. Apparently it has a quirky little harbor. I will have to check that out in a future vlog. The crazy people arrived. The crazy drunk people arrived. These are my friends. So this These are from the west coast all the way to the south coast. Drinking so Black Label instead of champagne because budget cuts. Anyway, the story uh, she told me about the artifact, apparently it's bullshit, it's not real. What's the story? Um, well, it was going to sell for 10,000 Rand, now it's selling for a case of Heineken. <laughs> <laughs> so, what so, does that tell And me? I got a ballot, 1994 ballot. But background. anyway, the original artifact was supposed to be our national anthem, the original handwritten anthem, anthem. And it turned out to be not true, but I mean, what's the chance you will find the original Andrews and Anthem, South African Anthem in this town? I don't think so. Sounds dodgy to me. Ending at the end now. Now it's a private party from here. Cheers. Absolutely. We're going to spend the out of this little ball from Spriceboy to a galas. Let's Here go. we go,
Welcome to Agolas, the most suddenly point in South Africa, in Africa. Many drinks later, but you don't need. Many drinks later, but you don't need to know about this part of the vlog. It's a cool bar, though. I ended up in the corner of the bar. They called it the Bermuda Triangle. Last night was an awesome night in the bar, small little, beautiful little bar. Lots of people bought me drinks and us drinks and there was a guy that had his birthday there and he bought everybody drinks. And it was wild and crazy and nice and I'm going to show you a bit of a goddess today and tomorrow hopefully. Uh, first I have to fix my hangover. But this is where I am now. The day was not too hard and not too easy, it was like intermediate. Near the end it was a bit tough but uh, we got here. Uh, this is Agulas, next to the sea. Luckily the sun came out so it's nice and sunny now. So the fun and games is over now. Now it's time for vlogging so I'm going to show you as much as I can of this town in the short amount of period I have. Taking a walk through town going to the southernmost point. Apparently there are two. One is the real most southernmost point in Africa and the other one is like one everybody thinks is the most southern most point, but apparently it's not the same place. And we'll check out the lighthouse and whatever we can. Okay, let's go. The coastline seems to be quite rocky here, but there is a little beach here. And there are also tidal pools where you can swim, so this is a swimmable coast. Here, yeah, right next to the, this little beach. There's a public braai area, which is always a good news for a guy like me who likes to braai. Looks like a nice little camping spot if you want to come and braai and catch some fish and braai the fish and hang out. Nice grass right next to the sea. It smells like the ocean. Nice ocean breeze. But now we're going to move along, walk next to the coast towards the light tower, the famous light tower. And we're going to pass some tidal pools as well. Walking along this most southerly coastline, I once again realized that I am proud to be South African. I am proud to be an African, not for any political reason, but just because I love this continent and its people. Oh, 
I was just walking down here and I met this guy, his name is Wally, he's a local, he used to be a tour guide as well and his timing is perfect because there's a bit of a dispute what the real or the true most southern point is. Here at the back is traditionally the local southern point where everybody said this is the most southern most point, closer to town. Yeah. Then apparently someone this or something came here and I looked at the longitudes and the latitudes and they said no this is not the most southern most point. It's around the corner there where they bought something and that is apparently the true geographical southernmost point. So this is like the traditional one and then there's another one. There, that is supposed to be the true geographical one. We can check that one out as well now. So yeah, that's a bit of an interesting inside info about this place. He says he's very glad that they shifted the, the space to the other side because it would have been too busy here. There's a lot of houses here and a walkway and stuff, so uh, he said it's a good thing that they got the real geographical point on the other side of the peninsula. So let's go, I think this is a peninsula, I don't know, that little point there. Okay, let's go walk, take a walk to the other one, but we're going to pass the lighthouse on the way as well. I think we're getting close to the true south, but busy, a few cars, a few buses, obviously a lot of tourists come in. So you meet interesting people as well, here in this town, that's what I like about it here as well. All kinds of people coming through here, it's one of the bucket list things to do, obviously. At the most suddenly tip of Africa, the most south you can get, how's the feeling? Do I feel more suddenly or more southish? No, it feels the same, but I'm here. <laughs> Behind me here is the little monument they built here. I think Mula built something to mark the most suddenly area in Africa. How does it look? It looks a little bit boring to me. I should have a bar here where you can get a shot of tequila because that would be exciting. Then you will have like the most suddenly tequila in Africa. Now that's something to write up about this one. This looks like a little, a very little stone edge or big pieces of it. Looks like a couple of stones. That's a great. <laughs> Shall I make the effort to climb to the top? 
I don't know. Will I have to pay? I don't know. Let's find out. It's 42 rand per person, only cards, only cash. Climb up the stairs to watch the view from the lighthouse and pay and not being allowed to film. Oh, cold beer. Which one? Which one? I wonder. It's a little bit of a museum here, lighthouse museum. Well, it's kind of a mix between art and the museum vibe. There's a little shop you get to and you walk from the lighthouse. All kinds of stuff in here. So I'm going to show you a bit of the town now and what's here, what's available. Obviously the first stop is a little bit touristy, but hey man, that's how it goes. Let's check it out. This is the Crafty Pig bar, one of the bars. Not my favorite one, we're gonna go to another one where we were when we arrived here the first night. That's a really cool bar. I think that's where I'm gonna have my lunch beer. The closest general store to the lighthouse, or the only one I can see so far, is this one. Yeah, it's just a normal store, but it seems that you can get kind of everything here. So, you need groceries. You run out of booze, you can just come to this part of town. In the same time, you want to get some stuff. These guys say, I think this is the only kind of shop on this side of town. The other one is seven kilometers away, but it's got everything you need. Like a lot of stuff, so it's pretty cool. Actually, I, I lied to you. There's another little shop, just a small cafe across the road, but I think it's a lot smaller. A little fish and chip shop here and I've got fresh fish, I think it's yellowtail just in front here and there's even wine and stuff and beers here. So after doing the walk, you can come and have a cold one here and get some fresh, fresh fish chicken out. It smells really good in here, I'm very tempted but hey, let's go for a beer. This is my favorite place. This is where we were when we came here the first night. Got nice and first. Next door, you can hear in the background they're building the, or rebuilding or renovating the trattoria. So there's nothing happening there, it seems. But yeah, this is the like, town, the center of Agula. This is part of Agula. So that's more or less it. I don't know what's going to happen the rest of the day. We'll see. Check that out. Serious meeting here. Yeah. Okay, here we are in the bar. Work hard, walking all over the place. Now we're gonna have a cold one. Yeah. I'm back here at the Crafty Pig. Took a nap because Lisa, my friend, she organized a local tour guide to take us on a little walking tour. I don't know if it's gonna to be to the same places. I don't know, but I said I'll come. I'm here. Her name is Vanessa, we're just waiting for her, so let's see what happens. Vanessa says she doesn't want to be on camera, so she's just going to be the mystery guide. We are going to do sundowners at the uh, wreck, something like that, we think. Community in 
just outside of town, a few kilometers, if you drive from the nature reserve, it's called Sailor Strand, which translates to Southern Beach. So it's a separate community, and we're gonna go to the beach now. As you can see, it's a very rocky beach, a lot of rocks, but uh, it's quite a nice beach. Uh, and apparently it's low water now, low tide, but when it's high tide, you can hear the rocks knocking against each other in the water. So we're missing that sound now, but uh, use your imagination. As you can see, a very unique area. I don't know if you can call this a beach, it's just rocks next to the sea. But it looks like an alien landscape. Now. This is actually fresh water. It looks like it should be seawater, this pool here next to the ocean. But it comes from deep underground and actually fresh. And this is where the Khoi San or the Bushmen had their water supply apparently. So we're going to try it down and see how it tastes. I don't want to swallow it because it's quite stagnant. But it's definitely fresh. It's not salty at all. So you can see it's very rocky at the back here and apparently the Bushmen or the Khoi San they made rock pools here so at high tide the fish will come in and at low tide you'll come and get your fish so ancient fishing techniques here next to the coast here we're going to try and show it to you from the mountain and see if you can see the outline a bit later if we still have sun to do it This is called Khoi San Parsley and you can eat it and it even tastes like real parsley. I am also explaining that you might as well call it Bushman's Parsley. Some say that Bushman is a derogatory term but I don't see why. What is wrong with living in the bush and close to nature? One might even say that that is a noble way of living. Definitely has a parsley taste. Not too bad actually. There's some interesting stuff lying here. This is a shark egg. So you get different types of different sharks. It looks like a plant, it feels like a plant, but it's actually a shark egg. And this is what they call a soft sponge. So I'm going to take this one home and take a nice bath. You can exfoliate your skin with this. Nice texture. Yeah. Get all that shit off.
gonna try and make it to the wreck before the sun sets, but we might not. Then we'll come and check it out tomorrow morning. I've got the horrible asthmatic wheeze again. This is the shipwreck of the Mishu Maru. It is the remnants of a Japanese fishing vessel that ran aground in the 80s. Luckily, everybody survived. Beef.